gospel of the man of sins. These are some of the biggest false teachers ever. I'm sure you've heard the word repent before, but do you know what the word repent means? Repentance is one of those things that is often misunderstood. Often misunderstood. Did you ever hear a preacher say, repent or turn from your sins to be saved? First, you have to be willing to repent of your sins. You say, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? It's a turning from sin. That's what it is. Often misunderstood. Are you sure that the preacher you have heard say this preaches the right gospel? Like repent of your sins. To repent, to turn from your sin. You repented of your sins. Turn away, hate sin. Turning away from sin. If you turn from your sin. If someone asked you to show me in the Bible where it says, repent of your sins to be saved, could you open your Bible and show the verse? Absolutely I could. But you know, it's me. It's Eric Smythe. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, most of the people you talk to, it's, 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 it's not Eric Smythe. You see? But of course I could do it. I have 313 Bible verses memorized. So I could do it. But not everyone could do it, which is sad. Most people don't even know a single verse. The phrase, repent of your sins, is found nowhere in Scripture. God. It's found nowhere in Scripture. Look, and it says correct. Wow, you guys. It says. Welcome to the last days, boys. Repent of your sins to be saved. Let's, let's. Welcome to the last days, boys. There's not a single verse that says it. Crazy, you guys. The whole thing, I tried to convince a theologian named Sam Stark. You know, and Sam Stark, I think I beat him in the debate, but you could argue I lost to him. It just depends on how much you value humor and whatever voice you like the most and whatever. There was a lot of knowledge being exchanged there. But one of the first things I said to him, I said, it never says repent of sins in the Bible. There's not a single verse that says it. I tried to get him, get get one over on him. And he destroyed me. And he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. He starts showing me, you know, Luke 24, 47, Mark 1, 15, and, you know, a bunch of other verses that said it. And then I said, and he says, you know, the context there is is turning from sins. And I said, no, it's not It's not to turn from sins. When it says repent, it's talking about a cha changing of your thinking of who Jesus Christ was. And then he says, okay, and where does it say that? I say, it doesn't say that. I didn't know what to say. I, it doesn't say that. And he goes, oh, okay, so it doesn't say that. He says, yeah, so... The whole theme of the Bible is to turn from sins, turn from rebellion, turn away from the devil, to hate the devil and to love God. And then I said, amen. And then he says, yeah, you're saying amen, but before you were saying, where does it say repent of sins? And I said, yeah, unless you're being very facetious. And I looked at him, I said, yeah, I was being very facetious. Of course it says repent of sins to be saved. There's not a single verse that doesn't say it. Repent of sins, you don't say. But this guy, fair I see, fair I do, mobbed with legions of demons. And the, the false teaching demons, big, 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 big demons. 
Rene Roland, you know, Onorado Diamante, Greg Jackson, Christian Farrell is a new new one rising up. But it all came from, you know, the Protestant Reformation, the faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone movement. Uh, and that had a bunch of backloaded works into it. But it was just kind of a weird, we're just going to pretend like we can say the exact opposite of James 2 and get it to work using Paul's writings. But then you have the free grace movement in 1950 with Zane Hodges, and no one believed that. It was kind of a joke, but it started catching on in 2008, 2010, 2000. Now it's getting really popular. You got these idiots here uh, watering down the gospel. Jude 1 4, 1 Timothy 4 1 talks about this. You know, Ray Comfort, uh, he's a two point gospel, faith plus repentance. I think that's kind of lame. No, no baptism. He believes in once saved, always saved. I think I, 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 I'm tempted to call him an idiot, but then you have a bunch of people like this that are just way, way, way worse. So I can't call Ray Comfort an idiot when we have guys like this that exist in the world. The one point gospel of faith alone, faith plus nothing, grace plus nothing, Christ without holiness, you know, faith without faithfulness, just pure antinomian, um, osas, and then this. Where it says repent of sins to be saved. You know, the Bible also doesn't say don't get on your hands and knees and worship the devil. Because that's, that's, that's the doctrine that's coming next. The Bible never says don't get on your hands and knees and worship the devil. There's not a single verse that says it. And then you have a bunch of people lined up on their hands and knees worshiping the devil. It's, it's absolutely Could you ridiculous. open your Bible and show the verse? The phrase, yes, repent of your sure. sins, is found nowhere. And why should we listen to this guy? Scripture. God repented more than anybody in the Because he's tickling my ears. God repented more than anyone. Bible. And obviously he was not turning from sin. Because the word repent comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means to change. Here's Greg Jackson, another horrible false teacher. One 200, 256th of a point gospel. He's going to abuse the Greek here. Metanoia, it means a uh, change of mind, a heavy change of mind, change of action, change of life, turning away from the devil, mer- turning away from yourself, mov- merging yourself into God. And he's going to water it down to mean superficial belief. In one's mind. So when you go from not believing Take the gospel to believing the gospel, you have repented. It's implied. A change in it's mind. It's implied. It's superficial belief. You got it. Well, what is going on? Like, what is going on? But the we, born angel from heaven. Wow. Preach. So now we're going to use Galatians 1.8 to damn uh, every Christian theology from 1949 and and earlier. They can all go to hell. So this is where this is where they really make me angry, where they become full sectarian. And now they're damning the righteous to hell. Proverbs 17.15 says, He who justifies the wicked, that's what they do. He who condemneth the just, that's what they do as well. You Any other both are an abomination to the Lord. gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. If, if you want to let in, you know, Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, and all the wicked people in heaven because they believe in Jesus for one second on their deathbed, you know, I, I, I strongly disagree. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Good luck with that. But to throw Mother Teresa in hell because... You know, she understands the gospel a little bit better than you. That's that's where I draw the line, you guys. That's absolutely ridiculous. As we said before, so say I and now I mean, again. Heaven forbid we love God more than you. We read the scriptures better, more than you. We, we evangelize more than you. We have better interpretation of scripture. I mean, I'm not saying it shouldn't piss you off at all. But it shouldn't piss you off so much that you throw us in If any man preach us. any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. There are 105 times in the King James Bible. Stephen Anderson, this guy's an absolute joke. He says he's a, he's a clown. He's a, at best a clown for Christ and a jester for the Lord. At best. He he he's he believes that homosexuals are full blown reprobate, 
But if you believe in the gospel for one second and then you become a murderer, an unrepentant murderer, then you're going to heaven. This guy believes in... Oh, looks like he has it here. Faith alone, easy believism, eternal security. This guy, he loves his, his sin and... Well, I guess I'll just tell you guys. The Lord did tell me that he does low-key know at this point. (laughs) That he has, you know, not exactly the truth. But he's he's way, (laughs) it's too late. He feels like it's too late to come clean. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this guy. Maybe just stop preaching. You could start there. But yeah, I just... Ugh, he's gross, this one. He wants to hold on to his sin. Or 105 verses, that is, that use the word repentance. Does the Bible ever even use the term repent of your sins? Not one time. The Bible never says don't get on your hands and knees and worship the devil. Not even once does it say that. Not one time in this entire big, thick Bible of 1,189 chapters does the Bible ever say, repent of your sins. Does the Bible really say, repent or repentance, so many times, and yet never say, repent of your sins, one time? Surely this cannot be true, but we know that that's what repentance means. Surely, this is something that the Bible says over and over. Let's briefly remind ourselves of what repentance means. Remember that repentance isn't just a feeling. It's not just compunction or feeling sorry. Those things are, are very important, of course. Repentance. Yeah, so... You also want to look at repent in the Hebrew. It comes from the word nakam, which feels means it's a feeling to feel remorse, and that's what this guy was saying. There's that. Of what box repentance left means. That says, this Remember is false, that repentance this is false, isn't just right? a feeling. It's not just compunction or feeling sorry. Those things are very important. Those things are very important, of course. So I agree with this guy in the middle. Nakam in the Hebrew means to feel sorry, feel remorse, and that is repent in the Hebrew. Nakam. It's also shuv, which means to turn. So repent is to turn and is to feel remorse. It's a change of mind, okay? So the, the, se- the second point of the gospel, repent of sins. Turn from sins, feel remorse for your sin. And by the way, even if the Bible, even if the Bible didn't exist, you would still need to repent of your sins to get to heaven. You would still need to repent of your sins to get to God. That's what repent of sins is. It is a Christian meme, turn or phrase, It says, live righteously, hate evil, and turn to God. So anyone that hates the repent of sins meme is wicked because they don't want you to turn away from evil and move towards God um, for salvation. But that's what salvation is. Matthew 1.25, we're not saved in our sins, we're saved from our sins. Repent of sins, even without the Bible at all. Without Jesus, without the New Testament, without the Old Testament. You must repent of sins to get to heaven. You must repent of sins to get to God. That's what repenting of sins is, turning to God. Repentance, I think of it as like a big deal. And moving towards God. I need to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and I need to have that change of heart. I need to feel that sorrow and that guilt and be ready to change my life and and give up that sin and stop doing it. The steps to a perfect repentance are many. Repentance is not Amen. just feeling shame for your wrongdoing. Repentance is not just walking around with guilt hanging over your head. Amen. Repentance is, um, okay, this is what's happened. This is what I've done. I like how this documentary, he starts showing a bunch of people smarter than him, you know, and then he says, no, it can't be that. No. Now I'm going to change. I'm going to turn away from this evil thing turn in turn towards the Lord. Repent is not just. Repentance is. Um, okay, this is what's happened. This is what I've done. Now I'm going to change. I'm going to turn away from this evil thing turn in turn towards the Lord. Repent is not... <laughs> it's amazing. He's right. Turn away from the evil and turn towards the Lord. And then he says, false! No, don't do that. It's so stupid. It's mainly a reorientation of our whole life. And it's going to take violence against the old man. So, there Amen. is no sin without forgiveness except the sin without repentance. St. John Chrysostom on repentance, which is terrible and formidable to the sinner. 
is a medicine to trespasses, a destruction to lawlessness, an end to tears, courage before God, a weapon against the devil, a knife that decapitates his head, the hope of salvation, the abolishment of despair, repentance opens heaven. Why can't somebody just give us a simple definition of repentance? Why does it take paragraphs of articles and emotionally embellished sermons to explain one little word? Why do you think? Why do you think, bro? Perhaps defining repentance. It's very important. It's the second most important doctrine in all of Christianity. It's the second most important doctrine in any universe anywhere. The only thing more important than this is God. Doctrine of God. How glorious is God? You know, your view of God. Repentance is getting to him. So, hello. As turning from your sins, so as to be saved. <laughs> the reason why we write, we have sermons on it. The reason why we have sermons. And emotionally embellished sermons. To explain is because it's the second most important word. thing. Perhaps Behind defining God. repentance as turning it's us from getting your to sins, him. so as to be saved, is causing this confusion. Turning from sins to be saved, turning from sins to be in saved, the first yes. place. As it pertains to salvation, if you look it up in a, in a Greek concordance, you will see that the word for repent is translated in the Greek as metanoia, which means to change your mind. Meta change, noia mind. That's so fine. Think differently or change your mind. A change in mind. Like the Hebrew word nakam and the Greek word metamelame, metanoia and metaneo are not different kinds of repentance. They do not automatically mean to turn from all sin every time the words are used. Oh my gosh. Then, <laughs> You're sick, dude. For we need context sick, sick, sick. to understand what is being repented to, repented yeah, yeah, tell me how we don't need to repent. Of or repented from. Now, what's Teach interesting me. is that these modern Bible versions, the NIV and the New King James, for example, they make a lot of changes to the Bible. They corrupt Scripture. And one of the changes that they make is that they remove the word repent from 46 verses. Okay, there are 105 times in the King James Bible, or 105 verses, that is, that use the word repentance. Well, 46 of those are removed from all the modern versions. But here's what's funny about it. You know which ones they remove? They don't just randomly remove 46 of them. Oh, no. They specifically and purposely remove every time God repented, they remove it. That's what they take out. And then they take out other things that are problematic to them. Like, for example, the verse I just read for you from Exodus 13, 17, they remove repent from that verse. And, you know, they remove Judas Iscariot repenting. You see, they remove anything that can prove that repenting does not mean repenting of your sins. All the ones that just make it so obvious that repent does not mean repent of your sins, that's what they specifically, purposely remove. There's an agenda behind it. I'm telling you, the devil is out there to promote this doctrine that in order to be saved, you must repent of your sins because it's work salvation. Judas was sorry. He was really sorry. Judas was not a monster. And he was very sorry, but he didn't repent. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned. That's another big lie in the free grace community. They're really, really afraid of the, for, the whole workspace salvation thing. Paul was against uh, wages, earning salvation through wages, works of law, works of self. Um, but Paul was never against loving God, you know, repenting of sins, being water baptized, he was in favor of that. He was in favor of those things. Um, and and Jesus, you know, even more so, more more importantly. So, I don't know what you're going for there. The it's the Ephesians two eight to nine fallacy is the one that says you don't need to get baptized, you don't need to love God, because <laughs> that would be works, and that would be a works based salvation. So it's, it's, it's really, 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 really bad. ...and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying... You mean the term repent of sin doesn't appear in the Bible? Never, not once. Repent from sin? Not once. Then where did it come from? Religion. Religion. <laughs> God didn't say it. Apostles never said it. It's a made up. Let's take a deeper look at this oh, crucial like concept. This? which molds the life of every Christian. Every There's not a Christian. single verse that says our, it. Our sins, you know, if we did something wrong, if we said something wrong, or thought something wrong, 
it is our job to correct that and not someone else's. So when we do repentance, repentance. Why is it so hard for us to change our bad habits and defilements, such as quitting smoking, stop arguing with our spouses, stop being bitter, and jealous, and angry? It's because we haven't learned how to truly repent. Why and how to repent? I don't know why this guy is showing showing Buddhism up here. It's like, oh, even the Buddhists know that repentance is So repentance is, is an important practice in Buddhism. So not only in Buddhism, it can also be found in other practices and religions. Yeah, this whole idea that repentance is superficial belief has not been around until about the 1950s and hasn't been taken seriously until about 2010. This. Just repent to Allah from all sins and feel remorseful and this would be sufficient inshallah. The best of those who make mistakes are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah never ever judges you based on your sin. Allah judges you based on your repentance. If you want to repent from a sin, then there are three conditions. You stop doing it, you feel sorry for doing it, and you make the decision to not do it again. That's pretty strong. If sincerely you can meet these three conditions, that's pretty strong Islam. That your repentance is accepted. Give us sincere repentance and complete repentance for all of our sins repentance. before the death rattle uh, comes upon us. Do you know one of the signs of a real Christian? They repent of their sins. Amen. Tshuva. Repentance. The word tshuva means returning. We want to return to God. When we do the wrong thing, it's like we're going astray away from Him. When we do tshuva, we're coming back to Him. Tshuva has two stages. The first stage is basically repenting. It's basically regretting the sin that you did. And the second stage is not repeating that sin. Stop with all the sins. Close the, close the faucet. No more sins. Let's show, let's show a bunch of people. Right? That like, in itself listen, can take you a decade. These guys are right. That in itself can it's take so you obvious. a decade. Repent of sins. Do you know one of the signs of a real Christian? Repentance. They repent of their sins. But in our tradition, the real repentance is to stop doing the wrong thing and start doing the right thing. Yeah, we're using, we're using the historical definition of repentance. But correct it. And if you do, sin no more. And that's what even Jesus used to tell in his congregation. Sin no more. Repent. And if you do, change your way of life. Simply by surrendering to me completely, Repenting. giving up all other popular notions, popular religious traditions, just by completely surrendering oneself to Shri Krishna, all the sinful reactions are destroyed and also the sinning propensity. Every Christian. This guy's trying to make me a Hindu? What, what is he the doing The concept here? of sin and repentance <laughs> and you're going to make the an Hindus effort believe in, repentance. in not doing that again now so it doesn't mean that you make a game out of it so this, this whole like, look, sense all the of forgiveness it's not that you're forgiven for me, by doing a particular seva it's not that you're forgiven because my, you do a particular act in, in it's because you surrendered new, really and you say to the guru i fall at your know. feet and i've lost and i need you now and the guru says i'll take you in but now i want you at least to have the intention that you're going to make an effort to walk on that straight path now, I'm going to help you. He's exposing say, everything that everyone's uh, ever I can't said. take it for granted that everybody knows that the word repent means, uh, is not synonymous with repent of your sins. Um, God repented. Uh, he changed his mind 38 times in the Bible. And God doesn't have any sins to repent for. Uh, therefore, repentance, as it pertains to salvation, is merely a change of mind. A change in mind. It's merely a change of mind. But the reason people are confused is because they're getting a mixed message. Because right. one minute it's all faith, and then the next minute it's repent of your sins. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Confusing. Which one is it? The reason you. Which one is it? Is it superficial belief or is it loving God? It can't be both. Keep sinning is because you're not perfectly repenting. To repent is to turn from your sin. Look, Amen. which sins do they think you have to repent of to be saved? Because I don't. Which sins do they think they need to repent of to be saved? Let's start with idolatry. Let's start with 
not worshiping the devil. True idolatry is loving something more than God. Can you get into heaven with true idolatry? How about the sins that lead to death? I mean, the Catholics, they have a mortal sin list. I'm not saying you agree with all of it. (laughs) How about some of them? How about forgiveness? You want to use forgiveness? Matthew 18, 21 to 35. I mean, I mean, try holding a grudge on a half-hearted repentant sinner or on a fully repentant sinner. Someone comes up to you and says, forgive me, I repent. And you say, no. Do you think you're going to get to heaven because you have superficial belief? That's just one sin. Matthew seven thirteen. it is a thin road. It, it's, it's a stairway to heaven and a highway to hell. Matthew seven thirteen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, I repent in an in, in the new definition of, of repent will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of my Father, which is to be a friend of Jesus Christ. Matthew seven twenty three, depart from me, you who didn't repent of your sins. I never knew you. We're not friends. Luke twenty four forty seven, Mark one fifteen. You you can't be serious, you guys. I mean, what sins do I need to repent of? Well, the big ones, yes. The mortal sins, yes. Would you be shocked if I told you you need to repent of the venial sins too? Would you be shocked if I told you it's not just the, it's not just God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in heaven that aren't let you letting you into heaven, but it's the angels and me too. People like me not letting you in. Wicked, 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 wicked people will not enter into the kingdom of heaven unless they drop those sins. Repent of sins. Turn from sins. Repent of sins. Repent of your false teaching. Repent of your murder, your your pedophilia, your your rape, your, uh, you know, your, your grudge holding. The only people you should be holding a grudge on are grudge holders. You can hold a grudge with the righteous on unrepentant sinners. Heaven would not be heaven without an infinite grudge held against unrepentant sinners. If you don't repent of your sins, you do not qualify for forgiveness. We cannot forgive you if you don't repent. We have to give you love, mercy, and justice. And the Justice Department has demands, and you will be roasted and toasted in hell. You will die and go to hell with your pedophilia, with your rape, and yes, with your porn. I know you guys love porn. And that's what this whole documentary is about, I'm sure. We want to watch naked girls on the internet. Well, you can die and go to hell, and you can take them with you. Nice try, making up your own little gospel here at the end. You will die and go to hell burning in hell choose God or choose your girlfriend choose God or choose your favorite sin but you cannot have both repent of sins turn from sins what listen to this guy because you're not what sin is repenting it? to repent yeah. is to turn from your sin look which sins do they think you have to repent of to be what sins do they think think they need to repent of to be saved maybe how about you read the whole bible what do you think because i don't say what is it because i don't know about you but i have not repented of all my sins i don't know about you but i haven't repented of all my sins well you can die and go to hell i mean you're a false teacher so you probably already knew you were going to hell james 3 1 burning in hell not all of you should want to be teachers you shall receive the greater condemnation I mean, I've repented of all my sins. I'm holding on to them. I'm holding on to my favorite. <sighs> 533. Well, I got places to be. Let's see. Can I do another seven minutes here? <sighs> seven minutes. I'll do a little bit more. But Stephen, bro, 
I haven't repented of all my sins. I mean, he expects us to think he's talking about venial sin because he's a pastor. He's a pastor behind the pulpit. Oh, he's just talking about venial sin. Oh, he's just talking about sins of omission. No, you guys, he's talking about mortal sin, probably. That's why he's preaching like this. That's why he believes this. He wants to hold on to the the big sins. I know what you're going to say. Well, the big sins and the little sins, they're all sins. They're all the... Listen, 1 Peter 4.18, I'm about to tell you a Bible verse you've never heard before and you'll never hear again. If the righteous scarcely enter into heaven, you can imagine what happens to Stephen Anderson and the ungodly and the sinners burning in hell. The venial sin brings you down to a D minus. A single mortal sin brings you to an F. The Fs are burning in hell. The D minus scarcely enter into heaven. Yes, there are, of course, there's people like Mother Teresa at the very end of her life. Not really a lot of venial sin there either. You know, she got a B plus. She got an A minus. Yeah. There's all these demonic, wicked heresies, imputed righteousness, sanctification over time, grace is a covering. These are not anywhere in Scripture either. Imputed righteousness. There's not a single verse that says it. It's a Protestant doctrine. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, Martin Luther wanted to tear it out. We're saved by grace. We're judged by works. If the righteous scarcely enter into heaven, you can imagine what happens to the ungodly and the sinner. Repent of sins. Repent of sins. Mark 115, repent of sins. What does it say in the book of Acts? It couldn't possibly be talking about repenting of sins. Look at Stephen Anderson. I've repented of all my sins. I'm holding on to my sins. If I ever if I'm ever behind the pulpit and I ever tell you guys I haven't repented of all my sins, you know what the next thing out of my mouth is gonna be? I'm also not the type of person. <laughs> that should be up here. But also, I might go to hell when I die, you guys. That's what sin is. It's hellfire. Repent of hellfire. Sin is separation from God. Sin is the stuff that God hates. You really think that, like, this is a joke and you can just... You can... Now that Jesus came, we get to hold on to all of our sins. The cake you need it too. We get Jesus and all the sins, all the wickedness. Jesus, God, he's just completely okay with wickedness now. You know what Hebrews 10.26 says? If we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. It took me a long time to memorize that. Because I didn't want to memorize it. First John 3, 7. Do not be deceived. He who does righteous is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. First John 3, 9. Anyone born of God cannot practice sin. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Stephen Anderson. I haven't repented of sins. Well, then you should. Okay. 
and he says, I'm not perfect. That's his excuse, by the way, guys. There's different, just so everyone knows, I mean, perfect means whole and means complete. So, Stephen Anderson, by his own admission, he's not whole, he's not complete, he doesn't know God. He hasn't repented of his sins because he's not complete in Christ. He's not, you know, a friend of God. I know he's talking about sinless perfectionism. Sinless perfectionism? That goes without saying, you guys. Yeah, John the Baptist is infinitely wicked relative to Jesus in his teenage years. Obviously. But when Jesus, when God flooded the earth, you know who he decided to start over with? He just chose someone at random because they're all sinners. No, he chose Noah. He says, I know a guy who actually repents of sins a little bit. And that's who he chose. Isn't that interesting that he chose the most righteous one? That's just, just saying. That is interesting. 1 John 2, 4, anyone who says, I know God, but keeps not the commandments is a liar. And the spirit of God is not in him. Hebrews 5, 9, salvation is given to all men, you guys, who obey him. Oh, he was doing so. This is why Martin Luther wanted to remove the book of Hebrews. The Hebrews is written, written to the Hebrews. That's what they'll say. Acts five thirty two. the Holy Spirit is given to all men who obey him. All right, guys, I got to go. Dear God, thank you for this day. Lord God, I pray for the fakes and the snakes in Christianity, the idiots, the oafs, the losers, the morons, the imbeciles, those who pretend like they don't know what's going on, those who want to serve sin, and those who want to serve two masters, those who want to play dumb. Lord God, Hosea 4, 6, who will be destroyed by a lack of knowledge. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved, a works that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, Lord, I, uh, I'm so sorry for my brothers and sisters of humanity who pretend like they don't know what a woman is, but I really am sorry for the brothers and sisters in Christ who pretend like they don't know what repentance is, they don't know how to apply it to scripture, they don't know how to apply it to life. They either don't want you at all or they want to get to you very, very, very slowly. I'm sorry for that. And I haven't reached the level of righteousness of the weakest angel in heaven yet, so I'm still capable of praying for the wicked. I pray for the wicked in the body of Christ who have gone full antinomian, full lawlessness, who have digested lies from the enemy and who are now mocking the truth, and who are now mocking the Lord, mocking the uh, the gospel, and ha- who have fallen into the Jude 1-4 trap and the 1 Timothy 4-1 trap of the seducing spirits. Lord God, I'm so sorry for the sin um, in the lives of the listeners and in the lives of Stephen Anderson and all those people. Lord God, um, I just, uh, I pray for repentance for them, that they may turn away and they may feel the refreshing oxygen that is that can be breathed on the other side of the fence. Please, Lord God, um, please, Lord, uh, man, I, this, this is so hard, but, uh, oh, man. I'm I'm probably going to unpray this in the future, but please lower your standards to let in a little bit more, a little little bit more Christian, a little little bit more Christians into heaven. I know it burns, but I just pray for some sort of grace, Lord God, and I don't want them to go to hell. I want to, I know they can't be trusted in heaven or whatever, whatever it is, but no unclean thing will enter into heaven. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I guess we can't lower the standards, huh? Well, it's worth, it was worth a shot. Lord, I know I'm barely going to enter into heaven myself. And my family and friends may die and go to hell. And that's their, their thing, Lord, but you're so polarizing. You want all of us. Please just give them a second chance to repent and find a doctrine that works for them. And so many of these guys are going to try to hit you in the face with their little holy Bible. It's not going to work. One look at you and how holy you are. Hebrews twelve fourteen. Without holiness, no one will see God. Lord, um, I wish I could give them a piece of my salvation. I wish I could transfer them a piece of my relationship with you. If I could, I would, but it's non-transferable. Please, Lord God, help them repent of sins, repent of the doctrines of demons, and find eternal life. Help them not to disrespect people like me and people who are smarter than them, other people that are smarter than them, and Jesus and the prophets, but instead to submit to the truth and to swallow the hard pill that we need works of repentance, we need works of holiness, we need works of faith. We need to hate idolatry and to hate the devil, to love God. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.